How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Just finished streaming and I wanted to make this video on the back of my stream so I can have my take on this out there. Sony has laid off 900 people or are about to lay off 900 people and I've, I've seen a lot of mixed reactions about this. I'm, I'm happy to see a lot of PlayStation fans pushing back against this. Um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, influencers damage controlling and then I'm seeing a lot of you know the more toxic side of things saying hey this is justified this should have happened I think you're a bunch of morons for saying that this is people's lives that you're fucking around with but that said uh, let's dive into the actual article and read what's being said here because there's a lot to actually break down here and you know I've said this time and time again that these companies aren't your friends, whether it's Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, all they care about is your wallet, right? No matter who it is, all they care about is finding a way to extract money from your wallet to go into their bank account. That's it. That's the bottom line. So anyway, this is from Jim Ryan, president and CEO. It says, the PlayStation community means everything to us. It absolutely doesn't. What means a lot to them is how much money you're spending. So I felt it was important to update you on a difficult day at our company. This really wasn't difficult. All this was, was them looking at a spreadsheet and saying, right, this isn't looking good. We've got a net profit margin of less than 6%. How do we improve this? The easiest way is to lay off staff. No two ways about it. That is the biggest cost you're going to have at the company. Lay it off. Your profits go instantly up. We have made the extremely hard decision to announce our plan to commence a reduction of our overall headcount globally by about 8% or about 900 people. Subject to local law and consultation processes, employees across the globe, including our studios, are impacted. This wasn't a difficult decision for them because 9 out of 10 of those people aren't even known outside of an ID number. Because the suits that are above doing the financing and everything else just see you as a number. You're not a person. You don't have a name. They just see you as an ID number on that list and say, right, we need to get rid of 900 of these people across the board. What's the ratio you want to get rid of within each section of the company? And then they go through with it. And then they start to assess who's going and who's not. These are incredibly talented people who have been part of our success and we are very grateful for their contributions. And unlike Nintendo, who did really bad with the Switch, uh, sorry, with the Wii U, where the CEO took a 50% pay cut to, in order to maintain, you know, staff and not have them lose their jobs. No such thing here, regardless of whether it's Sony or Microsoft, by the way, but no such thing here. However, the industry has changed immensely and we need to to future ready ourselves to set up the business up for what lies ahead. Essentially, all they're doing right now is, you know, there's no risk taking, there's no cool uh, gimmicky games like Gravity Rush coming. All they're going to do is uh, sad dad walking sim simulators and that costs a lot of money. So now they're going to have to reevaluate that, I guess. Let's continue reading. We need to deliver on expectations from developers and gamers and continue to propel future technology and gaming. So we took a step back to ensure we are set up to continue bringing the best gaming experiences to the community. Okay. Below, I've shared a copy of the email I sent out to the company this morning to provide more context on our thinking. We deeply appreciate support and understanding from the PlayStation community as these decisions are very difficult. Please rest assured that our plans for reorganizing and streamlining are so we can continue to deliver the best gaming experiences possible. That's a whole pile of bollocks. All they're doing here is trying to maintain a profit margin that is healthy. Now, does this mean that eventually they're going to go day and date with PC? I would say there's a good 90-95% chance that that is going to happen with all their games. Does this mean we're going to see tentpole titles going over to Switch and Xbox? No because they still have a console brand, but I do see the smaller games, like the Jack and Daxters, the Ratchet and Clanks, uh, and so forth. Those games I can see going multi-platform eventually to try and be bring in more sales once they have no value left to offer the platform. The email. Team, 
It is important to provide you with updates with the biz about the business as often as possible. Today I am writing with sad news. Through discussions over the past few months about the evolving economic landscape, changes in the way we develop, distribute and launch products, and ensuring our organization is future ready in this rapidly changing industry, we have concluded that tough decisions have become inevitable. I mean, you could always take a pay cut, right? That is always an option. The leadership team and I made the incredibly difficult decision to restructure operations, which regrettably includes a reduction in our workforce, impacting very talented individuals who have contributed to our success. It's not really been difficult, though, because half of these people you don't even know the names of. Probably more than half. I'd say about 80% you don't know the names of. It's, they're just figures on a spreadsheet that you are crossing off to increase that margin from here to here in terms of profit. Now, if you actually, you know, the board members took a 50% pay cut, that margin would go from here to here, even higher. But you know what? They're never going to do that because they want money and they're not prepared to lose money. So the easiest way to do it is to get rid of staff. This isn't just a soda problem. This is an industry problem. But it absolutely sucks that we're still seeing this in this day and age, in 2024. And the fact that we've had now more layoffs in 2024 than we've had in the whole of 2023 and we're only in February, it, it, it sucks. After careful consideration and many leadership discussions over several months, it has become clear that changes need to be made to continue to grow the business and develop the company. Well, how about making games for now, day and date with PC? I mean, it's going there anyway. You've seen the success of Helldivers. Concord is going to have the same success. Release the next game you're going out with. I think it's Wolf, uh, Venom. Make that day and date with PC. See how the sales go. You're going to see that it's going to be very good and that's going to propel your profits quite high. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't rely on COD forever because after the 10 year deal is up, you're not even going to have a parity clause with that. So that's going to actually start siphoning the players off your platform. We had to step back, look at our business historically, holistically, and move forward, focusing on the long term sustainability of the company and delivering the best experiences possible for our community. The goal is to streamline our resources to ensure our continued success and availability and ability to deliver experiences gamers and creators have come to expect from us. I want to be as transparent as possible with you, our partners and our community about what this means. We're envisioning a reduction, reducing our headcount by about 900 people, which is 8% of our workforce. There will be impacts for employees across all SIE regions, Americas, EMEA, Japan and APAC. Several PlayStation Studios will be affected, and by several, they're talking about Insomniac, Naughty Dog, Guerrilla Games. You know, these are free tentpole studios that have been carrying Sony for so long. And how does Sony thank them? By getting rid of their staff, the people that actually has been carrying them. For those of you in the US, all impacted employees will be notified today. In the UK, PlayStation Studios London Studio will close in its entirety. And this is a studio that made some really cool games, just like the Japan Studio. And, you know, it's a shame that they're disappearing. Uh, that there will be reductions in Fire Sprite Studio. This is like a predominantly a VR first party studio. So that's pretty much confirmed PSVR 2 is dead. They're pushing it over to PC anyway. We already know that. They're going to make it compatible sometime in 2024, which means PSVR 2, as far as PlayStation is concerned, their support ended. Something I've said all along, that Sony just will not support this. But you know what? In On this occasion, I hate the fact that I'm right. I really do. Because I really wanted it to succeed. But this just means that going forward, we're not going to see these gimmicks again, right? And if, if it will, I definitely won't be buying the PSVR 3 because... It's just a waste of money. And that there will be reductions of various functions across SIE in the UK. The proposed changes mean that we will enter a period of collective consultation before any final decisions are taken. All employees who are part of the collective consultation will be made aware of the next steps today. In Japan, we will implement a next career support program because things are done differently in Japan. Details will be communicated separately. Why can't they do something like that in the West? I don't know, maybe it's a cultural thing or a legal thing over there. In other countries, we will begin conversations with those who are potentially at risk or impacted as a result of the proposed course of action. For those who will be leaving Sony Interactive Entertainment, you are leaving this company with our deepest respect and appreciation for all your efforts during your tenure. No, they're not. You're just looking at them as a quick way to make some money and increase your profits. If you actually respected them, 
and this applies to all businesses, if you respected them, the people in charge who put the company into this position by overhiring, by, you know, overspending, would have actually taken a form of pay cut in order to try and save these jobs, to bring work in, to bring projects in, that would keep these people employed in a time like this, where economic crisis and standard of living is at an all-time low, and, well, economic crisis is at all-time high, standard of living is at an all-time low, you know, it's really difficult now. And with all of these developers now being laid off, there's so many limited jobs out there, right? It's a really, really shit time to lose your job and everyone else is losing their job as well. For those who will be staying at SIE, we'll be saying goodbye to friends and colleagues that we cherish during this process. And this will be painful. Your resilience, sensitivity and adaptiveness will be critical in the weeks to, and months to come because we don't care. We'll be on our yacht maybe our fourth or fifth yacht that we're going to buy now that we've got all this extra money and extra bonuses and we're going to be having a good time while you suffer and you know demoralize yourself at the thought that you could be next but don't worry we're perfectly okay we're going to take our bonuses we're going to take our fat paychecks and we will be okay but you suckers this will not be easy and i am aware of the impact it will have on well-being no, you don't give a shit stop using these words affected employees will receive support no they won't including several severance benefits while these are challenging times it is not indicative of a lack of strength of our company our brand or our industry it absolutely is that is exactly what it is our goal is to remain agile and adaptive to continue to focus on delivering the best gaming experience possible now and in the future. Thank you for your understanding during this difficult period. Please be kind to yourselves and to each other. We're talking about a guy that went up, took a photo shoot with the London studio five days ago, fully well knowing that all of these people are about to lose their jobs. Like what could possibly be going through his mind when he's taking that picture? It's, it's, it's disgusting. But at the same time, you know, it's messed up. But these companies don't aren't your friends. They never are your friends. They're always the villains in this. Never think that a company likes you. They only like your money. And this applies to even people that are working at the company. You're only as valuable to them as long as they're making a profit and a return on you. If they stop doing that, or there's a little bit of a risk where they're not going to be making a profit, you're gone. They just cut the fat because at the end of the day, that is the biggest chunk and the highest point of revenue to make a profit. But in reality, if these companies cared about you, they could each take a collective 25% cut and they would save probably most, if not all of those jobs. Right? Where I'm working right now, I think if I'm fully billable for about two and a half months, that's my salary covered. That just shows you how much money they make off me. And that's going to be the same for all of these staff members, right? Even if it's not two and a half months and it's three months, four months, they're still making like, you know, eight months worth of profit. Even if they just, you know, even after they've paid off, they can sit there twiddling their thumbs their salaries paid off but the you know when it comes to management they're not prepared to take that pay cut they need to buy their eighth yacht or their seventh mansion they don't care that you're losing your job in a time you know in a, in a season like this all they care about is to maintain that they've got their money and they're happy and this is why i've always said no matter which side you're on layoffs suck they're horrible no one likes them, no one wants them. And I see a lot of uh, people fanboying over this and console warring over this like it's a good thing. It's not a good thing, man. This is people's lives that are being fucked around here. It's, it's shit. But at the same time, don't think that these people give a shit. They don't. They look at that spreadsheet and say, right, this is the situation. We need to make X amount of money. What's the most expensive thing here? That person, that person, that person, and that person, and that team over there make a hell of are costing us a hell of a lot of money. Buy instant profit, and that's how it works. And it's sad, but everyone is seen as a commodity, not as a person. 
let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's my thoughts on this. Anyway, I wanted to get this out before it's too late. Um, like I said, I just finished my stream. Let me know what you think. Love to hear your thoughts. And I'll see you in the next video. As always, remain legend.